So it is about noon on day one of Smutathon and I have finished my first book. So the book that I read was Grave Witch by Kalanya Price and this fulfilled the requirement for Love Triangle which was kind of a stretch because there were two love interests but the second love interest was kind of absent a lot. So I feel like in the future books in this series it'll be more Love Triangle-y. This one was like a hint of Love Triangle but nonetheless I still really liked it. This is an urban fantasy and in this world everyone knows that the Fae and witches exist and they're a part of society and our main character is a grave witch meaning she is able to communicate with the dead and there are some strange murders that happened and she is working with the police to investigate and figure out what's going on so she's working with this one detective who is very mysterious and there's other stuff going on with him and then she also is in touch with death himself he's like a grim reaper type person and he ends up actually saving her life so her life gets saved by death at the beginning of the book yeah there's like a lot of stuff going on i really liked it i think this has potential to be a good urban fantasy series this definitely felt like a first book in that it was kind of just like giving us a taste but I feel like the other books in the series might be better, but it wasn't bad, and I'm excited to read the other books in the series. So now, it's only noon, so I might as well pick up another book. I think what I want to read is in this box of books. I placed an order of a bunch of romance books from Better World Books, which is a company and website that I recently discovered. I'm not sponsored by them. I just discovered them and all these books are like three dollars each and what I really like about this site is that they take a portion of the proceeds and donate it to literacy organizations and also for every book that you buy they donate a book. So it just made me feel a lot less guilty for buying 11 books that 11 books were also donated. Just makes me feel better for my spending habits to know that other people are reaping the benefits as well. Like I said, I ordered a bunch of romance books. I really don't even remember that much what I ordered because I was just kind of like anything that I'd heard of I was adding to my cart because like I said they were all three dollars. But I was kind of nervous because I'd never ordered from this site before so I was like I don't know what condition these are going to be in. So I'm just going to go through them really fast because the book I want to read I think is in here. I'm like 90% sure I ordered it. Okay so the first one we have is A Rogue by Any Other Name by Sarah McLean. Then we have A Week to Be Wicked by Tessa Dare. I ordered a bunch of Tessa Dare books because I'm trying to collect them all. I have the Castles Ever After series back there. Then I have the first two books in the Forbidden Hearts series and that's Hate to Want You and Wrong to Need You by Alicia Ray. I've already read both of these. I really love them. Two more Tessa Dare books. We have A Lady by Midnight and Any Duchess Will Do. And then I bought two Nailani Singh books. This one is Angel's Blood, which is the first book in her Guild Hunter series. And then this one is Slave to Sensation, which is the first in the Psy Changeling. And a lot of people recommended me this author, so I'm excited. I think these are like paranormal. And then we have another Sarah McLean, One Good Earl Deserves a Lover. And then the last book, which is the one I'm going to start reading right now, and that is The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. This is the first book in her new series. This I think will fulfill the challenge for arranged marriage. And then I have one other package that's also from Better World Books that for some reason this one was shipped separately but I don't remember what it is. Oh okay perfect. So this is the third book in the Forbidden Hearts series, Hurts to Love You by Alicia Ray. I haven't read this one yet. I'm planning on reading it during Smutathon. So now I have the whole trilogy. Okay, well, I'm gonna go read The Duchess Deal. I'm really excited. I'll let you guys know what I think when I'm done. I just finished The Duchess Deal and I really liked this. It was super cute. 
basically it's about this woman who is a seamstress and she was hired to make the wedding gown of this woman who was marrying a duke and then the engagement falls through and she is left with this dress that no one has paid for so she decides to put the wedding dress on and go to the duke's manor and demand payment. <laughs> she shows up and little does she know the Duke is actually looking for a new wife who is desperate for marriage because he was heavily wounded in war and the whole I think left side of his body is covered in burn scars and so he thinks that he's like a monster and he's horribly disfigured and that no one could possibly love him but he needs an heir so when this woman walks into his house wearing a wedding dress he thinks hey let me ask her to marry me so she can give me an heir. It's kind of like a business arrangement marriage. He has rules of like once the baby's born he'll put her in a house and they'll never have to see each other again. Blah blah blah. And then yeah of course they fall in love and it was so cute. I really liked it. So day one was a success. I finished two books and completed the challenges for love triangle and arranged marriage. I have no idea what I'm gonna read tomorrow. everyone today is day two of smutathon and last night before I went to sleep I started a new book and then I finished it this morning it was called an unseen attraction by KJ Charles this is a male male historical romance and it was so cute I actually was surprised because I didn't know much going into this book but it ended up being a murder mystery type of story so basically we follow this man named Clem who is Indian and he runs a lodging house and then he has a crush on one of the lodgers who is a taxidermist but they didn't call it taxidermy back then I guess they called it a stuffer which is kind of gross and creepy. I'm glad they changed the name. But yeah, they kind of just have a cute romance with each other. And then one day, one of the lodgers is found dead on the doorstep. And so they both kind of get swept up in this mystery. And yeah, it was really good. The romance, like I said, was just super cute. I really liked the mystery aspect of the story. This book fulfilled the challenge of friends to lovers which is a stretch just like with the love triangle challenge they were friends like at the start of the book and then immediately within like chapter one they become more than friends so I'm still counting it as friends to lovers because they did start as friends but there wasn't as much build up as I would assume most friends to lovers books have so I wouldn't necessarily say this is a friends to lovers book but I'm still counting it as that unless I end up reading a different Friends to Lovers book. But yeah, now I'm going to read Enslaved by the Ocean by Bella Jewel. This is going to be for my stranded together trope, but I believe it's about a girl who is running away from some sort of problem and she goes on a yacht and then the yacht catches fire and they're stranded in the middle of the ocean and then pirates show up and take them so yeah i'm excited it's pretty short it's like 200 pages and i'm downloading the audiobook right now so i should be able to read this pretty quickly but also while i'm waiting for this audiobook to download i just want to quickly say that i'm like so excited by how many people are participating in smutathon when Lainey and I put this together, we did not think anyone was going to participate. And I've been going through the hashtag and watching people's TBRs. It's just super exciting to see how many people are enthusiastic about romance. One thing that was my goal in doing this readathon, other than to just read romances, was to make people feel comfortable reading romances because the romance genre in general just gets a lot of flack for being like guilty pleasure and not real books. It really frustrates me because I think people should be allowed to enjoy and read whatever they want and reading romance books isn't less than reading other books. 
it's just stupid and I definitely like years ago was embarrassed to read romance like I would be embarrassed to be seen in the romance section at bookstores and now I just don't care because who cares who cares what people like to read so yeah that's just my long tangent about how um, romance is great and you should read whatever the hell you want. Okay, so I just finished Enslaved by the Ocean, and like I said, that completed the challenge for Stranded Together. The book was good, not great. I don't know, it wasn't bad, but it was kind of cringy. Like, a lot of the dialogue was really cringy, and the sex scenes. The author used a lot of words in these sex scenes that just made me like, <laughs> The dialogue was really cringy. Like, the first real conversation that the main character had with the pirate captain, they were talking about what to eat for breakfast, and he was like, you like fruit? And she said, oh yes, I love fruit. And then he goes, most girls do. It was just like a weird conversation to have. I don't know, it was just weird. Um, but it wasn't bad, and it ended on a cliffhanger, so I have to read the second one. But while I was reading, I got a package in the mail from Berkeley. And these are two books that I actually requested. They're both romance books, so it fits for right now. I don't know if I'll read either of these this week, but the first one is The Proposal by Jasmine Goolery. This is the companion to The Wedding Date, which I read and really liked. And then the other one is Intercepted by Alexa Martin, which I believe is an NFL romance. This one is about a girl who gets proposed to at a baseball game, and she's not into it, and so this guy kind of rescues her. They both sound really good and I'm excited so thank you Berkeley for sending this to me okay so it is now day three and I didn't update you guys but last night I read roomies by Christina Lauren which fulfilled the challenge for fake dating I liked it I think it was like a solid three star romance. Basically it was about this girl who kind of has a crush on this street performer um, who's, a, who's a musician and he plays in the subways and she like goes out of her way to take the subway to his stop so she can listen to him play. Her uncle is a composer or a musician. He's a very famous musical person and he works on a musical but basically they need a new like head musician for the musical and she suggests this guitar player that she has a crush on and so he auditions and they love him but he is from Ireland and his work visa expired four years ago so he is not able to take the job because of that so she gets the crazy idea to offer to marry him so he gets a green card and he can work on the musical and that's what the story is they get married and he works on the musical and they eventually fall in love I liked the romance aspect of it, like, the chemistry that the two main characters had was so good. Like, it was what I was continuing to read for. I really loved their chemistry. The plot part was really boring, <laughs> I, and I didn't care about it at all. Like, every time they were at the theater doing the musical stuff, I checked out. I was so bored by that. I didn't care. I thought a lot of the conflicts in the book were silly because you'd think that the main conflict of the book would be immigration, right? Because they're in a fake marriage to get a green card and everyone knows that the US immigration system is garbage. That leads to really high stakes conflict, right? But it never really came into play. Like, yeah, they got nervous a couple of times and they had to be interviewed, but like it wasn't a big deal. And the actual conflicts that they had just seemed super stupid and petty. So I didn't like those parts. So yeah, overall, I liked it. I mean, as a romance book, it delivered on the romance. So I can't really fault it. Just the plot part was boring to me. But yeah, I liked it. And it was the first Christina Lauren book I've ever read. And I know she's like a really popular romance author. So I want to read more. It, I think it's a co-author. It's two people. I think it's two friends, which is really cool to me that two best friends write these books together. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to read more of their books. So if you have suggestions on what Christina Lauren book I should read next, let me know. And then this morning... I read a book. I read Angel's Blood by Neilani Singh. I was just really in the mood for like a trashy paranormal and that's exactly what this was. I really really liked it. Basically in this world there are angels and angels are able to create vampires 
but sometimes the vampires get out of control so they need vampire hunters and so that's what our main character is she is a vampire hunter she gets a job from one of the like highest archangels Raphael to track and hunt down another archangel who has gone rogue this is I think this is only like the second angel book I've ever read the only other one I can think of that has angels in it was angel fall by Susan E which I really liked and after reading this I'm I really want to go back and reread angel fall and finish that trilogy because I never finished it I really really liked this there was like so much banter between the main character and the love interest I also really loved these side characters there was like this circle of people who protected the Archangel Raphael and they were all really interesting and I'm excited to find out more about them in the future books in this series. This completed the challenge for enemies to lovers. Now I don't know what I'm gonna read. I think I'm in the mood for another historical romance so I might pick up something by Tessa Dare. a cute shot but it is way too hot out here okay so I just finished reading a night to surrender by Tessa Dare and I really didn't like it and I'm so sad because this is I think the sixth book by Tessa Dare that I've read and I loved every single one up until this but this was such a letdown and I know this is like one of her earlier books so she's obviously improved since then but like I'm just so sad because this was the book that I was like, I picked it up because I wanted to love something. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna love it. It's Tessa Dare. But it was just so annoying. Like, basically, this series follows this town called Spindle Cove where women who are different or mocked by society because they don't want to get married or for whatever reason, Spindle Cove is a place where they can go and be away from society, away from men, it's 100% women. It seems like a great time. And it was great until the men come and they just ruin everything. So basically this group of men come into town and they, f they realize that it's a town completely run by women and they all like lose their minds because, oh my God, how can women do things? Like, and it was just, uh, there was so much fragile masculinity in this book I couldn't take it they were freaking out because instead of a tavern where they could drink beer and eat meat there was a tea shop and they had to drink tea and pastries oh my god how will they ever survive and then like the love interest went to the blacksmith and he was like offended that the blacksmith made jewelry instead of armor and weapons and he just like spent the entire book trying to put the main character in her place and I just wasn't here for it. She was enjoying her life in this town with no men and he came through and just ruined everything for her. So yeah, this was annoying. Um, I pretty much sped through the second half because I just wanted it to be over. So yeah, now I don't know what I'm gonna read because I'm kind of annoyed. <laughs> I last updated you guys. I think the last update I made was that I finished reading A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. It is now the day after Smutathon ended and I was just super tired the last couple days. But I read two more books since I last updated you guys. The first one was The King of Bourbon Street, which I don't think this fulfilled any of the challenges. I guess you would classify it as a BDSM romance. Basically about this girl who comes from like a Kardashian type 
family. She's like a socialite. And she basically, at the beginning of the book, her parents were trying to force her to date this guy who they're trying to make a business partnership with and she's really not interested in, in him. So she makes a sex tape and threatens to release it unless her mom lets her stop dating the dude. So she ends up like running away to New Orleans and she stays at this hotel and she meets the owner of the hotel who is this older guy who is into being a dom. And so they start up this sexual relationship. The main female character is fat and I thought the fat rep was really positive. Like she never looked down on herself for her weight and the love interest really liked that she was fat. And then the, the love interest was bi, and I think this might be, I'm trying to think, I, there's not that many male bi characters that I've read. This was like probably one of the few. I can't off the top of my head think of another person. Usually when I see bi characters in books, they're women, so. I really liked that part. And yeah, I liked it. This was probably the smuttiest of all the books I read this week. There was a lot of sex scenes. I think overall I liked this book. Was it amazing? No. And there were a couple things that like made me cringe, like all of the pet names. I'm really not a fan of pet names. So I did not like that he kept calling the main character Kitten and Cupcake. Anytime he called her Kitten or Cupcake, I like, shriveled up inside. But yeah, overall it was good if you're looking for a healthy, smutty, BDSM type book. And the other book I read was The Governess Affair by Courtney Milan, and this is the first book in the Brothers Sinister series. It's a historical romance and um, I've been recommended this series a lot. And oh my god, it was so good. I was just really excited because I was disappointed by my last Tessa Dare book and I, I just I really liked this and I think it could be a really promising historical romance series. I actually think that this book is like a prequel to the series but in a lot of the reviews that I read it said you should read this first even though I think it was I don't think it was written first. And then I also on the last day of Smutathon I started reading Stray by Rachel Vincent and this was for the challenge of, I think, Second Chance. And it was a reread. I've read this book before and I really loved it. I didn't end up finishing the book by the time Smutathon ended. But basically, it is a shifter romance about werecats. It's a really good book and I'm excited to continue on with the series. And I'll quickly wrap up everything that I read. The first book I read was Grave Witch and I gave this 3.5 stars. Then I read The Duchess Deal, and I gave this four out of five stars. I think that this was my favorite thing I read in the week. Then I read An Unseen Attraction, I gave this 3.5 out of five stars. Then I read Enslaved by the Ocean, and I gave this two out of five stars. Then I read Roomies, and I gave this three out of five stars. Then I read Angel's Blood, and I gave this 3.5 stars. Then I read A Night to Surrender, and I gave this one star. Then I read The King of Bourbon Street, I gave this three out of five stars. And lastly, I read The Governor's Affair, and I gave this 3.5 out of five stars. And then I guess I'll just throw in Stray, because I did finish it yesterday, and I read most of it on the last day of Smutathon, and I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. I read a lot during Smutathon. I've literally never in my life read 10 books in one week. Well, I guess it was nine and a half, technically. But I've never read that much in a week in my life, and I'm so proud of myself. In my last reading vlog, I read five books in one week, and I was really proud of that. In this reading vlog, I read 10 books in one week. So how am I gonna top myself? Can I do it? Stay tuned to find out.